Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Demon Souls. Last time we failed against the Man-Eater, so we're gonna take a break from the uh, Tower of Latria and start the Shrine of Storms. Now, uh, I did something different this time. I actually tried to prepare. I don't know how well I prepared, and I actually didn't take uh, any moon grasses, but in the first place, I am pretty low on moon grasses as it is. So, uh, in that case, I should probably go do some grinding at the Bulletarian Palace. Because that's one of the better places to, uh, grind for moon grasses. Anyways, Shrine of Storms. Very cool area. Uh, one of the only mostly bright areas in the game. Uh, but yeah, just very nice place to be. Um, probably going to enjoy this world a little bit better than the ones we've been doing. Although I do love the Stone Fang Tunnel. That's just a cool area in general. Anyways, uh, you may be wondering why I'm wielding a club. That's because these skeleton dudes, they are weak to blunt weapons, is what I've been told. I, I think that's the proper strategy to take these guys on. Personally, I've never had trouble taking them down just with normal uh, swords or that kind of thing, but their weakness is definitely bl blunt weapons. You'll definitely do a lot more damage using blunt weapons, so that's pretty much the suggested strategy for taking them down. Anyways, you do want to take this section a little bit slowly, just because um, if you spawn too many of these skeleton dudes at once, you can really get a uh, pretty good handful, and you don't want to overwhelm yourself with that. Anyways, that's the backstab with a blunt weapon. Oops, I pushed him instead of finishing him off. But, uh, there you go. And uh, yeah, all projectiles actually kind of home in on you. You might have noticed that very early on when we were uh, going across that bridge on Bulletarian Palace 1-1, and uh, we got hit by that one archer. Even though uh, I kind of, I kind of swerved out of the way, his arrow kind of followed me and stabbed me in the back. And then I, I don't think that actually killed me. I think it was the dragon's breath that killed me. But regardless. Um, the, the lesson to take from that is that, yes, uh, projectiles do sort of home in on you, so you want to be careful about that. Very careful about that. But yeah, we're actually getting an item up here that's going to be extremely useful for us. Um, mostly because uh, up to this point we haven't been able to use miracles at all. It's not as if we had a very large amount of slots for miracles, but yeah, we haven't been able to use our healing spell, which we've had for a good while now. This is the Talisman of God, and the Talisman of God is going to allow us to use miracles. So, uh, you know what? No, let me not do it that way. I'm just gonna hide under this bridge so I don't have to worry about those guys sniping me. I'm pretty sure you're safe under here. Yeah, got that big arch overhead so they can't hit us from here. Anyways, so yeah, now that we have the Catalyst and the Talisman of God, we can cast not only Soul Ray, but we can also cast, whoops, we can also cast Heal. That's what Heal looks like. We don't have any, uh, we don't have any health to heal, but, uh, I just figured I'd show that off, so you know what it does. And, uh, while I'm at it, why don't I put on the Fragrant Ring so that I can restore some health. You know what I've noticed? We haven't been invaded at all. I'm kind of disappointed at that. I was hoping we'd get invaded more and be more exciting, you know? I mean, on at early levels, I usually get my butt kicked by invaders, but... I don't know. Anyways, uh, this is a Black Skeleton. The ones we've been fighting so far have been Silver Skeletons, and they are child's play compared to this guy. This guy means business, and you don't want to screw with him. Especially that one attack he did back there, and right again there. That can kill you, and it has a very large range, so it's a very dangerous attack to get hit by. But what you just want to do is keep smacking him, try and break his guard, you know, trick him. You gotta be very, uh, clever taking this guy on, and try not to get hit. Like I did right there. Luckily, I only got hit once, and, uh, it's not that big of a deal. I would like to heal myself, but I don't have to worry about it right this second. Anyways, that was the... get off of me. 
that was the Crescent Falchion, and um, it's, it's a pretty decent weapon. I don't think we're going to use it. Although I did find some use out of it in a uh, previous playthrough. I don't know. Regardless, it's a weapon. We want to collect it. It's good stuff. You should never not take the opportunity to get an extra weapon. Because you should always want weapons. Weapons are fancy. I was kind of lucky there, that guy didn't hit me. Just slumps against the wall. Okay. Um, did I bring arrows? No, I didn't. I'm an idiot. Or, did I even have arrows? Ah, whatever. Wait, no! Talisman of God. Sorry about that. I'm totally disorganized today. There we go. There we go. And we can actually just drop down here. It doesn't take off that much health, so no need to worry about that. Um, but yeah, if we go back this way and then up... You know what? We actually can take that guy out. Uh, let's equip the catalyst. See, this is how. Because he's standing right up there, if you can see that. And if we can get close enough to acquire a lock on right here. You can just take him out in one go. So there you have it. Um, I also hear a crystal gecko somewhere. Somewhere around here. Alright. Give him some of our medicine. What's that? Oh right, I know what that is. That's the, uh, if you notice those big flying stingrays around the area, um, those are going to be a relatively annoying enemy, and uh, you might have actually been hearing those previously. And I was not being very defensive there, so I took a few hits. But that's alright, because we are regenerating our HP, and that'll allow me to uh, get some uses out of this healing spell. Unless I really start getting my ass kicked. There we go. But yeah, you might notice, these guys have pretty elaborate skeletons. Not really normal skeleton enemies. These guys look like they've just got this big armory, iron-clad skeleton thing going on. I don't even know. You scary give Sparky me. Give Twinkly me. Me. You. Trade! Trade! Give me Sparkly Twinkly! I think this is Sparkly the Crow, don't quote me on that name, but basically, <clears throat> if you drop something here, and I don't think we have any Sparkly to give him, her, I don't know, at the moment, but if we did, uh, if we dropped it and then reloaded our game, we'd be able to get fancy things off of it. Sometimes rings, sometimes uh, colorless demon souls. Uh, fancy stuff like that. But right now, I don't think there's anything I want to give to them, so... We might come back here later, just to show it off. I think if we actually gave them the Augite of Guidance... You know, let's do that just to show it off. Anyways, if we drop that... Uh, and then if we go here and load our profile, this will just reload our game. Uh, now we're going to have to sit through a loading screen. But if we do that, this is kind of the shortcut. If you want to leave and then come back the next time you come, uh, Sparkly will have left a little present for you. But in our case, if we just want to do this quickly, we can load our profile again. Uh, our previous item will be gone, but in its place we'll have some items. So yeah, that's Sparkly the Crow. Very weird character, but kind of funny. Anyways, uh, let's pick this up, Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. Okay, good. I wasn't sure if enemies would respawn or not, but uh, it looks like they don't, so... That's good news for us, saves us some time. Anyways, just smack this gecko until it dies. There we go. 
And we got a shard of dark moonstone. That's pretty good. Alright. Um, is there anything else up here? I imagine there was. Yep. Right, this way. Um, it's one of those stingrays up close. Uh, if you use soul arrows, you can take him down. Oh, that would have been a nice shot if it hit him. But not quite long range enough. So we got some light arrows and we got a compound longbow there. I believe the compound longbow is better than the compound shortbow. So we're probably going to be using this from now on. Granted, I have the ability to use it, and I do. And since we got some arrows, uh, we can actually make use of that. I'm going to use light arrows instead of white arrows, because I believe that white arrows might be the best kind of arrow. I could be wrong about that. Don't take my word for it. But I think they're the best kind of arrows to use. There's a secret tunnel down here. But yeah, we're going to use light arrows. And I think light arrows... I, I don't know what kind of damage they do. I think they do a little bit of magic damage. Anyways. Yeah, that's that's kind of an ambush back there. There we go. This other guy's spazzing around the corner because he can't quite pathfind his way around. And now he got around to us there. This is a rolling maniac. Yeah, this, this is what a lot of the skeletons do. They just kind of roll around at you like crazy people. It was a good thing I had enough stamina rolled away there, because I didn't have enough to attack, and he was charging up his big fancy stab or slash attack. It's not a good thing to get hit by. You don't want to get caught in the middle of that. Anyways, uh... Alright, so we have sort of this dungeon area. It's locked, but that's Grave Robber Blige down there, and uh, he's going to be sort of our merchant for this area. He's an alright guy. He actually looks like a clone of, um... Patches the hyena, or the thief, or I don't know what he's called. I'm pretty sure the loading screen calls him a hyena, but I always just called him Patches the Thief. I don't know why, actually. <laughs> he doesn't really thieve much. I mean, he's more like, just tries to kill you and take your stuff, so I guess hyena would be more fitting. Tries to kill you and take all your stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty befitting name. Anyways, uh, let's head back. As you saw there, this, this is kind of a shortcut route to get behind the vanguard if you want to just straight up avoid him. But since we managed to take him out at the beginning of this playthrough, we should definitely be able to take him out this time. And those things that you've been seeing, uh, those are the pro projectiles shot by the stingrays. I don't know where they come from, because they definitely don't look like their tails or anything like that, but... It's pretty weird. Anyways, uh, let's keep running. This is actually, surprisingly, my first time going through this area with a blunt weapon. I've always just gone with whatever weapon I used for the playthrough, because, you know, I usually just use the same weapon. But I don't know, it's kind of interesting. Anyways, as you saw there, there are a bunch of traps in the walls here, so it's kind of hard to dodge that. Well, not that hard. If you, like, ran right down here, I'm pretty sure there's no chance of you getting hit. Well, there were those two, I guess, but... Anyways, it's it's not too hard to avoid that. We got the copper key off of that guy, and um, as you saw before, that'll actually unlock that uh, that prison cell where uh, Grave Robber Blige is. So we'll just head on back down there and uh, help him out. Oh boy, taking things a tiny bit too hastily. Um, oh, that is one thing that reset right here. Anyways, before we free uh, Blige, though, let's just go on ahead and take out the Vanguard. And I also believe the Killish is in this area, which is another curved, uh, curved sword. And one of my favorites. This is the one that I used a lot on my first playthrough of the game, just ever. Um, not my main playthrough, because I actually gave up on my first playthrough, but on my very first playthrough, I used the Killish, and it was a pretty fancy weapon. Let's try taking this thing out. Ah. Yeah, this... Ah, there we go. As you can see, they don't have that much health. And, uh, once you kill them, they actually tend to drop, I believe, 
cloud stone, which is good for us, but we'll get to that in a little while. First, we should take care of the problem at hand, which is the vanguard over there. Uchikatan only does 33. I imagine that's because we aren't strong enough to wield it, yeah. Let me see if I two-hand it, what the damage is like. 105. Um... Ooh, Crescent Falchion is pretty good. We're gonna use the Dragon Longsword, though, because I think that's our best weapon right now. It is now, and it probably always will be. Until we find the Blue Blood Sword, then the Blue Blood Sword's gonna be a lot better. Anyways, it would be nice if he'd get away from this wall. Because I can't really get behind him if he's crouched against a wall. Obviously. Alright. Come on, buddy. But yeah, don't doubt his range, because he has a lot of range, so you want to definitely stay the heck away from him. Um... Ah, uh, here we go. Should probably start attacking him right about now. Oh, boy. So yeah, the Vanguard is still very much capable of killing us in one shot. So this is one of those times when we really don't want to make any mistakes at all like that. <laughs> I didn't sweet see that sweep coming. I thought it was, like, turning around. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Half Moon Grass right behind the gate here. So, uh, we need some more Moon Grass. That's the place to find it here. Okay, let's drop down this way. And you can see our soul stain right behind the vanguard, so let's try and grab that before we even try and fight him. Uh, but we should really evade him as much as possible. Um, but yeah. I would like to kill this thing first, though, because I don't want it shooting stuff at me. Ah, there we go. Took a shot, but I managed to kill it, so that's good. Anyways, as I said before, these things drop shards of cloudstone, which are pretty good. Oh, no! Well, you know what? There. <laughs> you know what? My, uh... My Dragon Longsword does high enough damage, I don't even really need to use a blunt weapon to kill these dudes. See, this is why I didn't usually use... or exploit these guys' weakness, because in the first place, with enough... with you know, with the amount of damage that I did, with, um long swords alone, it didn't really make a difference, you know, using blunt weapons or sword weapons, so. It was very close. I think I'm starting to get to that point where, uh, I'm rushing in too much because I'm getting impatient, so, uh, I'm gonna try and be a little less crazy. So yeah, what I said before about Vanguard's range, um, probably just saw it firsthand there, and uh, we lost all of our souls yet again. Awesome! I hope it isn't too horribly bad of a thing that I'm kind of caring less the more we die about the souls I'm losing. I know I'm better than this. I don't usually make such silly mistakes like that. I'm just having a really off day. Or maybe I do make mistakes like that, and just because I'm LPing, I'm trying to, uh... I'm trying way too hard to be competent. Or at least what I find to be competent. And it's actually making me worse off for it. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, that's the end of the Vanguard. Let's grab 
the Grey Demon Soul. Oh god, what a pain in the butt. I had died twice to him and lost all my souls for him. I think that's probably just the worst part of it all. But, either way. Oh wow, I got two in one go. That's pretty nice. Okay, uh, run back down this way just to get Grave Robber Blige out of his little jail cell here. Uh, what else do we have? Hero Soul. I've been saving up all these souls. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is just, um, use them all up by the end of this LP and then level up as much as I can. Maybe that'll help a little bit for all the souls I've been losing in the first place, so, oh, I don't know. You saved me. Heavens, I can't believe I fell for that trap. I suppose I owe you now. I'm Grave Robber Blige. It's thanks I can provide you with useful goods. Who couldn't do with a little help down in these parts? Indeed. Alright, so... Grave Robber Blige, he... sells... just the usual stuff. He sells sticky white stuff if you want to, uh... use that to enchant your weapons. Yes, I know. Make all the jokes you want. I've already been made. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, he also sells arrows. That's a big thing for him, is that, especially in the second area, he sells a lot of the arrows available for the game, so, uh, if you want arrows, this is the guy to go to. And he also sells a lot of leather armor if you want that. But, yeah. This shrine was used in a ghastly ritual by an ancient tribe. They've long perished, and now demons have put the souls to work. At least here you're killing things that are already dead, like skeletons and shadow lurkers. That's what I like about this place. Better than killing those poor, soul-starved humans, right? Indeed. Better than killing those poor. Okay, that's all he has to say. Nothing suits you fancy. Well, don't be too frugal. A bit of indulgence goes a long way. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know exactly what he meant by that whole ghastly ritual thing. Um, if anybody has some story stuff, somebody actually gave me, like, the full story of, uh, the Tower of Latria. I might do a bonus episode just to talk about the, uh, different backstories of each area or something. Just because, you know, I, I don't know the backstories very well myself, and um, since people have kind of been explaining to me exactly what's gone on, somebody actually sent me this very long-winded message kind of telling me, like, the history of the Tower of Latria, and that was really cool. It was interesting to read through, but, um, yeah, if I could do some readings of that or something, that would be kind of cool to do, just as a little bonus. 